Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you guys are all excited and expectant to hear from God. We are already on the second week and the last installment of our series, If You Know, You Know. And we are asking this question, how much do we really know about the heart of God for the young people? Ano ba yung apuso ng Panginoon pagdating sa mga kabataan, pagdating sa mga next generation? And as we dig deeper about the heart of God for the young people, the question is, are we willing to obey God? Are we willing to obey God and are we willing to do this together? So that's what we're gonna look at for the next few minutes. Last week, Pastor Dave, kung nandito po kayo last week, it was Pastor Dave who preached to us a very powerful, message in Psalm 78. In fact, today po, we will continue on reading this Psalm 78 by David. And this is actually the second uh, longest Psalm in the Bible. So last week po, we look at the first few verses. And now for today, we're going to look at the last few verses of Psalm 78. You know, the Psalms, this Psalm is actually, no, pag nabasa niyo po siya, and I want to encourage you to read it even as you go home. If you read Psalm 78, it's actually the story of the nation of Israel about their unfaithfulness and about their unbelief unto God. And in the midst of all these things, ito po yung sobrang ganda sa story ng Psalm 78. In the midst of all these things, the psalmist highlighted the faithfulness of God. In the midst of the unfaithfulness and disobedience of his own people, the people that he loved, God remained faithful. Also last week, we were able, tayo po mismo, were able to witness with our own eyes the faithfulness of God when we baptized seven of our students in all our services. I believe we have a picture there that we can show. We've baptized po seven of our young people. If you were here uh, last week, this was something very emotional din po kami, even the congregation during the time. I think you know, deep I think, but this was actually the first time that we did this during our service that we were able to baptize young people publicly declaring their faith in Jesus Christ, declaring that the old is gone and the new life in Jesus Christ has come. Not only that, uh, speaking of God's faithfulness, last Friday po, we were able to do a very small celebration among our graduate students. So we were able to gather 20, I think, of our our students who graduated during the pandemic. Meron ba dito na graduate kayo in the pandemic? Can I see a show fans kung meron man? Okay. <laughs> All right, meron tayo. How many of you would agree, especially yung mga graduate? No, it was hard. It was difficult. At some point, it was disappointing. Kasi yung pinakahihintay mo na graduation, tapos biglang, ha? Pandemic? Walang ceremony? I, I, I remember... Line. Grabe ate Nikki, parang five seconds lang nag-flash yung picture ko kasi sa sobrang dami namin graduate. Can you imagine that they've waited for it, they've worked hard, studied hard for four years or five, and then sa online sila graduate. That's why as campus ministry, yung mga campus missionaries, we've organized this very simple celebration among our young people just to remind them once again kung paano naging faithful si God sa buhay nila. Despite all the disappointments, despite all the delays, the, the uncertainties, we can still celebrate because God is faithful. Amen? And so we're going to continue on that as we look at Psalm 78. And it's important to note, by the way, yung Psalm 78 po, ang pinaka-purpose okay, ng psalmist nung sinulat niya to is to remind the people of Israel about who God is. Kasi po tayong mga tao, as human beings, tama po ba, we have the tendency to forget. Yes or no? Right? Diba yung, di na nga natin matanda, oh nga, ano nga yung pagkain natin nung nakaraan? Ano nga ba yung lunch natin nung the other day? Diba? We easily forget. Sometimes, some of you, you, you forget kung saan ka nga ba nag-park kanina. Okay? Napatingin yung iba, napaisip yung, oh nga, no, saan nga ba ako nag-park? You know, we, we tend to forget. That's why this psalmist, he made it sure that I will remind the people of God about who God is. But not only that, again, they were also reminded about the failures, the disobedience so that they will never or they will not um, do that anymore dun sa generation 
nila. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, we will read from uh, Psalm 78, verse 65 to 72. Start with this. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, like a strong man shouting because of wine. And he put his adversaries throughout. He put them to everlasting shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loves. He built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth which he has founded forever. He chose David, his servant, like like the earth, uh, uh, he chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the nursing ewes, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, Israel, his inheritance. With upright heart, and sh he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. You see, the Psalm 78, again, a long story of recounting Israel's at unfaithfulness. Um, uh, towards the Lord, forgetting what He has done, forgetting what God has done from them, uh, for them, especially during the time uh, in Egypt. Kung naalala nyo po yung story na yun, but God, uh, through His power, through His grace, they were um, uh, freed from slavery sa mga Egyptians during that time. But generation after generation, they forgot what God has done for them. It was an ongoing cycle. Okay. They will come to the Lord, tapos the Lord will bless them, the Lord will forgive them, tapos makakalimutan na naman nila si Lord. Tapos eh, they're, they're suffering the consequences of their actions and their disobedience. Some of them would worship even idols, worship other gods. Tapos God will send a people, a, a prophet to them to remind them, repent and come back to God. You will never, you will never um, uh, get what you need from that idol that you are worshiping right now, you will just suffer consequences. And so people of God would always come into repentance and then they will love God again, they would follow God again, and then another generation will come na makakalimutan na naman kung sino si God. It was a never-ending cycle, especially during this time in Psalm 78. That's why verse 65 is very important. It's like a turning point. Why? Because this is finally where God intervened in the situation of Israel. So how God did uh, how did God intervene in their situation? Verse 65 in LNLT version, sabi don, the Lord rose up as though waking from sleep, like a warrior aroused from a drunken stupor. Now this verse tells us that the Lord rose up as though waking from sleep. This doesn't mean na natutulog po ang Diyos. Di ba may kanta po na gano'n? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Sorry, mali, mali pa ata yung tono ko. No? Di ko na maalala yung song na yun. But the Bible tells us, si Lord hindi naman po natutulog. Tama po ba? The Lord knows everything. The Lord is present in every situation of our lives. The good and even the bad. And so, this psalm, what he was trying to say is this, doesn't mean that God was asleep or didn't care about them, but this is to say, tama po ba, every time that we are in sin or suffering the consequences of our sin, we feel like God is not present. Do you have moments, did you have moments in your life like that? When you are in the middle of your sin, suffering the consequences of your sin, di ba ganun naman talaga yung feeling, yung parang, bakit parang ang layo ni God? But then finally, hindi naman po talaga nawala si God. But this is actually like a turning point again in the nation of Israel saying, finally, God will intervene. Okay? Kasi kung left on their own, wala talaga. Hindi talaga nila kaya. So how, God, how did God intervene? The Bible scholars, um, quick story lang po ulit. The Bible scholars said, during this time, yung verses na binasa natin, verses 65 uh, and to 72, this was actually the time when the nation of Israel was um, being beaten up by their enemy, the Philistines. Okay? At may nangyari po during that time. The Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Lord has been captured by the Philistines. Now, why is this so important? In the Old Testament, ang Ark of Covenant po, pinagawa po yan ni Lord sa people of Israel, very specific. It's made of gold. Why? Because the Ark of the Lord or the Ark of the Covenant is actually a physical symbol of the presence of God. 
that God is with them. Kaya po dala-dala nila yung Ark of the Covenant wherever they go. But during the time when the Philistines was able to capture the Ark of the Covenant, imagine the shame, the humiliation. Not only the people of Israel, but imagine the humiliation that it caused in the name of God. So the first intervention that God did was to bring back His honor. Okay? Sana po yung gumawa ng paraan. Nilito niya yung mga enemies so that they will, they themselves will bring back the Ark of the Covenant. Second intervention that God did was this. He raised someone to lead and to shepherd the nation of Israel. Yun po yung verse 72 na binasa natin kanina that he chose his servant David. After all that all that cycles no, of unfaithfulness, disobedience, frustrations. Finally, God intervened and he uh, chose David to lead and shepherd his people. What can we learn from this psalm? Yeah, I give you the summary or the explanation or the background, the context of this psalm. There are so many lessons that we can learn from this. But because today we're talking about the next generation, what, when, what can we learn from this? It's this, no? that raising and discipling the next generation is for the long haul. Why am I saying this? Yung uh, years po between the time of Moses until the time that David was chosen as the king, the Bible scholar said it's around 300 to 400 years. Can you imagine that? No, it was really generation after another generation, one after another. Okay? So hindi po siya overnight. Right? And so in the same way when we look at our young people and discipling our next generation right now, means that hindi po talaga natin mapipilit na dapat okay ka na. Dapat you're doing great already. Dapat you're walking in the ways of the Lord already. Eh, sometimes hindi po talaga ganun yung nangyayari. Sometimes it will really take patience, <laughs> grace of the Lord, mercy of the Lord. Diba? Pagkaharap mo yung apo mo, pagkaharap mo yung anak mo, pagkausap mo, hindi mo alam kung naiintindihan nila yung sinasabi mo. Guess what? It's okay. You're not alone. <laughs> Lahat po tayo dito, we have our own next generation in our lives. And the, you know, the Bible is giving us a picture that raising and discipling the next generation is actually long term. Hindi po natin to mamamadali. We cannot shortcut yung ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay nila, but we can be assured that God is at work in their lives. You know, as a church, Victory is actually celebrating its 38th year, ito pong 2022. The church was founded 1984, and I believe we have pictures here. And you know, the reason why I'm showing these pictures to all of us is this. We are very blessed to have founders or our leaders in our church that have embraced this call in their lives. To reach out to the next generation, not only for a year, not only during their stay, actually, uh, Pastor Steve and Dr. Rice Brooks, together with other uh, student missionaries from America during that time, ang purpose lang talaga ni nila dito is to do a short-term missions dito po sa atin sa Pilipinas, sa University Belt. But that short-term mission became uh, one year, two years, hanggang they stayed na for many years. Not all of them, but uh, especially Pastor Steve, he stayed here with his wife, Deborah. Why? Because they understood that raising and discipling the next generation will be for the long haul. And we are so blessed to have leaders like that. Year after year, the next picture, they would continue to evangelize in the campuses. This one was in the university belt, Dr. Rice Brooks preaching the gospel among the students, asking the students if they would like to put their faith in Jesus Christ. Not only that, our leaders, our pastors knew na hindi lang to pwedeng sila lang ang gumagawa nito. That's why they also trained other students like Bishop Ferdy, hey, Pastor Mark Constantino. They were the very first uh, student leaders during that time. So, sila mismo na reach out sila, and then after that, they were trained, they were equipped, they were empowered to be sent out as well to do the same thing. 
to reach out to their fellow students, to reach out to the young people. Again, why would they do this? Because they understood that raising and discipling the next generation will be for the long haul. For our local church, di na po tayo lalayo. Nabanggit na to ni Pastor Bojo kanina. Our church, Victory Green Hills, has been founded since 2007. And this year, we're gonna be celebrating 15 years of God's faithfulness here in our church. I, I, I love these pictures, how our, our church started here with Pastor Dennis C. And uh, Pastor Bojo in the campus ministry. Naalala ko pa po to because I got a reach out when I was a college students, si Pastor Bojo, yung campus missionary namin nun, together with Pastor Joash and Ate Ethel during the time. I remember them going to our school to meet with us, to disciple us, to encourage us also, especially for me during that time. I really felt that personally as a nursing student, kasi ang hirap ng course ko eh. No, I, want, I wanted to give up already during that time, but I remember Ge would also talk to me. She was higher batch uh, uh, to me during that time. She, they would encourage me to go and they encourage me to pursue student counsel. Kahit parang, hindi ko naman alam yung gagawin dito. Wala naman akong experience in leading in a student council. But they were the ones calling out God's purposes and God's gifting in my life. And I was so blessed that I was able to cut that vision also and have that heart also to reach out to my fellow classmates, sa mga kaibigan ko, and even to the younger ones. Through the years, it never changed. Through the years, the heart for the young people never changed. In fact, I would say, mas lalo pang ang umaala by the grace of God. Because mas marami tayong nakikita that there are more campuses who, that are now being opened na si Lord na mismo, especially when the pandemic started. Because many of the teachers and administrators of school, they've realized our students, they don't just need academics. Do you agree with that? Especially with the struggles that our young people go through today with their mental health. No, they realize that our students, our young people, need genuine friendship. They need uh, someone to talk to. And most importantly, they need God to be in their lives. That's why so, there are stories po ng mga schools natin like Sijas, um, the TFCA. They're the, they're the ones na po na nag open ng school nila and asking us to go there, do a retreat, do a talk, do a life group among their students. God is faithful from the time even from the time of the Bible up until today. And that is actually our assurance. God is faithful in all generations. Do you believe in that? Faithful po ang Panginoon, hindi lang po sa mga kabataan, pero sa lahat ng generasyon. God is faithful in your generation, in my generation, and even in the generations to come. Talking about the faithfulness of God, I want to share to you the story of Jeremy Evaristo and his family. Okay, let me show to you the picture. Jeremy is one of our students. Ito pong nasa taas, if I'm not mistaken, this was around 2017 to 2018. Jeremy and his brother Hans got invited by their fellow students. Mga friends lang din nila. During that time po kasi, we have a youth service that we do in Santa Mesa. It was in the cinema, the old cinema in SM Santa Mesa. So malapit lang si Jeremy doon and then his friends Ken and Carl Cordero would invite them. Tara, join us in our youth service every Friday during that time. And so they would attend and then they liked it there. Um, they, uh, they heard the word of God. And then James, okay, kuya-kuya yan po ni James. Jeremy became his leader. Okay? James was the one who discipled Jeremy. Now, the story did not end there. 2019, every uh, Mother's Day, po, we would encourage our students, oh, this would be the best opportunity, best time to invite your moms to go to the church. And so Jeremy and Hans, ganun po yung ginawa nila. They invited their mom, si Ati Ems Everisto, during the time, during Mother's Day. And then yung dad niya and yung kuya nila, uh, 
uh, sila Ate Ems and Jeremy and Hans, they attended here. And then Kuya Derek, the dad, and uh, Tom, yung kuya nila, uh, nag-chapel po sa baba. Kasi dun talaga sila nag attend sa Catholic Church there uh, sa baba during the time. And then a month after, ano po ba yung celebrate natin a month after Mother's Day? Father's Day naman. And so for Jeremy, ay okay, pagkakataon naman, dad ko naman yung i-invite ka sa church. So they invited their dad also. And then Ati Ems, uh, when I asked her about this story, she said, that's where their relationship with God started. They started attending the church with their kids, with as, as a whole family. Ati Ems also made that decision during that time in 2019, she gave her life to the Lord. 2019, she got water baptized. Let, let's praise God for that. That was 2019. And so, of course, the whole family, especially Jeremy, Ati Ems, kept on praying because there are still family members. They are, yes, uma attend sila, but they still don't have that personal relationship with the Lord. Fast forward in the pandemic, July 2022, they were attending as a family, and Kuya Derek, the father, gave his life to the Lord. He accepted Jesus Christ. And last week, during our Victory Weekend, he got water baptized as well. Praise God. God is faithful in all generations. I love this story. It was the, a friend of the student inviting them, Tara, attend ka with us in the youth service. They would pray, they would come together. He is being discipled. He had a burden for his parents, for his family. He invited his parents. And it turns out that the Lord is actually moving and at work in his family already. Ati M said this to me. She said, the mom, you know what, Miki? Ever since we uh, had a relation, we started to have a relationship with the Lord, unti unti inayos ni Lord yung buhay namin. Amazing. It's only God can, only our God who can do that, who can transform lives and uh, save people and even families for that matter. God is faithful in all generations. Going back to Psalm 78. The psalmist physical, specifically mentioned God choosing and raising David to be the next king of Israel. Verse 70, he chose David, his servant, took him from the sheepfolds. From following the nursing use, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people. With upright heart, he shepherded them. What is the one word that you would always notice in this verse? It's the word shepherd. Okay, Shepherd, shepherding, shepherded. It's about uh, being uh, a shepherd, yun yung tinawag ni Lord kay, De kay David. Of all kinds of work, with all other ways available, God has chosen shepherding as his way of taking care of his people. Of all people that can be called and raised as a king during the time of Israel, God chose David a shepherd. Fast forward to the New Testament, John chapter 10. Jesus Christ said that he is our good shepherd. And then we go back to the life of David. David was called to shepherd, but David knew as, as well that he himself is a sheep being shepherded by God. Psalm 23, a very familiar psalm to all of us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. It was David who wrote that psalm. And so although God called him to be a shepherd to the Israelites, he knew that he himself is being shepherded by God. And that truth is very important to all of us, that God is our shepherd. God is our shepherd, all generations, all of us. And because of this, I love this, no? God is our shepherd. Now, God has given us this responsibility. I shared this uh, last week in our 10 a.m. service, and I want to share this to all of us once again. God shares to us the responsibility and privilege of shepherding people. 
Yes, God is our ultimate shepherd. And because of that, God can now share okay, that responsibility. And I would say a privilege as well to shepherd other people. We can be God's extension of his grace, of his love, of his compassion towards one another, towards the next generation. You know, last year I read this book entitled The Way of the Shepherd, The Seven Secrets to Managing Productive People by Dr. Kevin Lemon and Bill Pentak. Actually, I highly recommend for you guys to read this book. Uh, if you are working in a corporate, you're a young professional, or even the young people here right now, this book will be very, very helpful for you guys. Um, he summarized it with this seven way of the sh ways of the shepherd know the condition of your flock discover the shape of your sheep help your sheep identify with you make your pasture a safe place staff of direction the rod of correction and the heart of the shepherd these principles actually can be applied in any kind of relationships know your flock get to know them one sheep at a time Okay. Be intentional in knowing the people around you. Be intentional to listen, to listen to the next generation. And for the young ones here, be intentional as well to listen to the now generation, to the older generation as they speak to us, as they impart to us their hearts and their knowledge and their wisdom. Know the condition of your flock. Discover the shape of your sheep. Shape means strengths, heart, attitude, personality, and experiences. All of us here, we have different stories. Yes or no? All of us here, we have different experiences. Yes or no? Guess what? We can take the time to know each other's shape. Okay? What's your strength, your heart, your attitude? Okay, your personality, let your experiences, let's share it to one another so that we'll be able to help and encourage each other. Build trust by helping your sheep identify with you. Keep your people well informed. Make it a safe place for conversation. Make your relationship a safe place to open up. To share to us, hindi lang yung mga success, but sometimes even the disappointments and failures. Stop. Staff of direction, give the people the freedom to move. Wag lang tayong dikta ng dikta ko ano yung gagawin nila. But let us give them the freedom to do also, but at the same time, reminding them of the probable uh, result of their decisions. The rod of correction, protect, let's correct, and let's inspect what's happening in their lives. And most importantly, the heart of the shepherd, you need to have, we need to all move in love and in compassion. Just like how God is being a shepherd to all of us. I want to share this story, Victoria Manyo. She's one of our uh, interns right now, ministry interns. Si Vic po, we met her in PUP, okay, way back. Anong year ba to Vic, no? Hindi ko na <laughs> Kopong kopong. <laughs> All right, so this is Vic. We met her in uh, PUP San Juan, one of the campuses that we're reaching out here especially here in our city. And Kat, uh, one of our former campus missionaries, was the one who discipled her, who reached out to her, uh, even trained her and equipped her. Vic also became part of the student council because her heart is to be able to serve the campus. She wants a platform where she can preach the gospel and share the love of God to the student body. And you know, fast forward to today, she graduated 2019, 2019. 19, and now she's working already and now she's a ministry intern she's leading especially you mga moms and dads po here she's actually leading your kids 10 to 13 years old in our youth Sundays she's the one shepherding our young people she took charge she took it by heart na Lord this is where you were calling me. Kahit na ang busy ko sa work, ang daming nangyayari, even in her personal life, yet she has embraced this call to shepherd other people. But here's I want to, what I want also to share to all of us. Next picture. 
You have to remember, it was Kat who discipled or shepherded Vic up until today. Tama ba, Vic? Well, we have to realize Kat herself have also experienced being shepherded when she was still a student. And then, because of the love, the compassion that she had received, she was also able to extend that to Vic. And Vic herself felt, experienced being shepherded and started shepherding other people as well. And now fast forward, Kat and Brian, no? Oh, they are now shepherding their own next generation. Why am I showing this picture? Lahat po tayo dito, we are being shepherded by God. And now God is sharing that responsibility and privilege to shepherd the people around us. To shepherd the people, especially the next generation that God has entrusted to us. And guess what? This will never end. It will never stop. Only, of course, if you would say yes in obedience to the Lord. Amen? God shares to us that responsibility. Going back to Psalm 78, going back to David. In spite of the rebellion, stubbornness of Israel, God still was able to raise up a generation that loves him and follows him. Verse 72, with upright heart, he shepherded them and guided them with skillful hand. This verse makes me really excited and hopeful for our next generation and for all the generations to come. Why? Because of this truth. God is able to raise a people with an upright heart and skillful hands. Our God, the God that we worship, the God of the Bible, is able to raise up a people with an upright heart and skillful hands. What does it mean to have an upright heart? Upright heart, righteous. Heart that hates evil. A heart that has a great love for God and for his people. A heart of obedience towards God and his word. Not perfect, but repentant. Not perfect, but trusting in the Lord. Making every effort to honor God. Upright heart. Not only that, but God is able to raise up a generation with a generation of people with skillful hands, excellent and faithful people. You may not be the best in your job. You may not be the best in your school. Baka wala kang honors or what? But that doesn't mean na yun na yung identity mo. Guess what? You can still be excellent in what you do because the grace of God is with you. You can still be excellent and successful as long as you are being faithful and obedient to God's call in your life. As long as you are being faithful to what God has entrusted to you, not settling for mediocrity. I want to share a story to all of us. Last story, this is Tony, one of our students as well that we've reached out in San Juan National High School. I've met Tony when she was still in high school. Um, di ko na rin po matanda na nung year. <laughs> okay. I feel so old that in Master Walsh. Okay. I, I've been in the campus ministry for eight years already. By the grace of God, I started 2014. And so Tony, I met her in high school, started life groups, starting disciple, uh, started to disciple her. But after a few months or a year, I guess, bigla pong nawala si Tony, parang bola. <laughs> hindi ko po alam, hindi ko na siya, uh, she's not attending our uh, life group during that time. And so I thought, uh, baka ayaw niya, baka may, may pinagdadaanan. So, Ano talaga, wala kaming communication, this and that. Then one time, when we were already in Santa Mesa doing our youth services there, so I would go in the campuses nearby. One of those is CCP, Central Colleges of the Philippines. And so I went inside the campus, and then may mga students doon, nagwa-volleyball, sa may patio nila, ganyan. And then may tumawag sa akin, Ate Nikki. Tapos pagtingin ko po, uy, si Tony, I know this for 
person. And so from high school, that's di na kami nakita. Now she's a college student during that time, and we got reconnected. I knew then that it was already the Lord, because that time that we got when we got reconnected, she messaged me. I think in Facebook during that time, sabi niya ate, can we meet again? And then I went back to the campus. We met in the library. That's where I found out the story of Tony, of what had happened to her. But to cut the long story short, she made that recommitment once again. Ate, I want to give my life to the Lord. This time, seriously, na ako. This time, I don't. I want to turn away from my old life of sin, and I want to turn to God. Now, after a few months discipling her and all, she got water baptized, and that she was never the same again. After a few months again, she felt that call from the Lord. Ate, I want to run as an SK. Kagawad. She's part of Barangay Ermitanyo here in San Juan City. And so all of us in, in the Camus ministry, we prayed for her. Sige, pag-pray natin yan. Okay, if, you, if God really placed that in your heart, that leadership anointing, we would support you. And so during the campaign, nandun yung mga ibang students, kahit hindi naman sila botante sa, <laughs> sa barangay na yun. Pero okay lang, all out support with all our prayers. And Tony won as an SK Kagawad in that barangay. She still currently is an SK Kagawad hanggat hindi pa natutuloy yung bagong election. Fast forward again, di pa natapos dun. She graduated. She's one of the first batches in, uh, in the pandemic who graduated sa CCP. And she got her dream job right after graduating. She's now working as a biomed technician in Cardinal Santos Medical Center. Her dream job. And she's being excellent in the job that she's doing right now. The boss would always talk to her, talking about skillful hands. God is able. God is able to raise up a generation with an upright heart, with that moral integrity in their hearts that they will stand firm in the word of God. They will not be caught up with how the world does it today. They will not follow the norm of the world, but they will stand firm with the truth of the word of God, upright heart, and at the same time, by the grace of God, giving their best, being excellent with what God has entrusted to them. Raising the next generation is for the long haul. It's long term. But our assurance is this. God is faithful. God is our shepherd. And our God is able. And may this assurance enable us to be the shepherd that God has called us to become, especially among the people around us, especially among the next generation. Amen? Can I ask everyone right now to please rise? I want to lead all of us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word for us today. Lord, by faith, we receive your word. Your word is for each and every one of us. It's not for the person next to me. It's not for my tito. It's not for the other person that I know na mas uh, grabe yung compassion. No, Lord, the word is for us. The word is for me. And so, Father, I pray that we'll be able to embrace this call that you have for our church, O Lord. Father, I pray that we will have that urgency, Lord. We will not wait. Kapag okay na lang lahat, kapag hindi na ako busy, kapag wala na ako masyadong ginagawa, doon na lang ako magiging involved. No, Lord. My prayer is that we will say yes to you, O oh God, in whatever ways we can, Lord God. It could be as simple as listening to my pamangkin, uh, nakamusta yung kapatid ko. It could be as simple as partnering with that next generation, guiding him or her in the next season of his life as a young professional, as a college student, it could be as simple as that. Lord, hindi na kami lalayo. Every one of us has been given a role to shepherd the next generation. Father, I pray that you will give us that grace just like David. It was you who chose David. And I believe, Lord, it is you saying, I choose you as well. The Lord is calling us by name. 
and telling to us, you have a role to play. You have a role to play for the next generation. Father, we honor you. We bless you. Continue to be our shepherd, O Lord, so that we ourselves may be able to shepherd other people as well. In the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Your fire burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire, your fire. Burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire, your fire burns within me. Burn within me with your fire. Your fire burns within me. Burn within me with your fire. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. See the glory of the Lord is on. Your eyes to see the glory of the Lord is on the earth. Arise, 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 generation. Arise, generation, no longer forsaken. Arise, arise, arise. Arise, generation, no longer Arise, 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 generation, no longer forsaken. Arise, 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 generation, no longer forsaken. Arise, arise. Burns within me, burn within me with your fire. Your fire burns within me, burn within me, Lord. Your fire, your fire burns within. Burns within me, burn within me, with your fire. Arise. Arise, generation, no longer forsake. Arise, arise, arise. Arise, generation, no Forsaken, arise, arise, arise.
arise, arise, generation, no longer forsake. Arise, 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 generation, no longer forsake. Arise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Nikki, for the reminder of that powerful word. You know, as we were singing this song, my prayer and hope is that there will always be a generation after generation that will continue to arise. As Nikki said, raising up a, a discipling a, ge, a generations for the long haul. And I, I've been in this church, this ministry for a long time for 23 years and uh, I got discipled when I was a high school student and just seeing how you know the Lord is faithful to every generation raising up young people and uh, you know one of the things I love about our 2 p.m. service is our young people here kung hindi nyo na napansin Lagi may mga young people tayo dito, mga studyante dito sa 2 p.m. service natin. Hindi lang dahil campus Sunday today, okay? But usually, I'm, I'm always excited to come up here and preach in our 2 p.m. service because our first couple of rows of seats are filled with our students, our young people. And if you want to feel young, attend our 2 p.m. service, okay? But uh, more than that, you know, just seeing all our young people here today, parang it... It, it brought me tears to my eyes. It got me excited. It got me really uh, reminded once again of the passion of God really for the next generation. And, uh, you know, if, how, and you might be thinking, Pano ba yan? Di naman ako campus missionary. How can we be involved in, you know, raising up and discipling the next generation? Alam mo, lahat po tayo, we can be involved. And if you're a parent here, how many parents do we have here today? Okay, wow. You know, you... Whether you like it or like it, okay, you are discipling the next generation. Okay. Uh, my wife and I, we have a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, a two-year-old. And just recently, my wife started talking to our nine and seven-year-old about sex. Okay. And uh, you know, it's, we, we're talking to them about it because we don't want them to learn about it in the Okay, sa mga circle of friends nila, they're already hearing it. Nine and seven, ah. Huh? Okay? And so we grab that opportunity to already tell them, okay, this is what the Bible has to say about that. This is God created it. Okay? It's for marriage. Okay? We were telling them. Okay? And even talking about, okay, I, I know I'm sharing too much information. My wife is going to kill me. But uh, you know, we're talking about boyfriend, girlfriend. Because they hear that okay, at their age. All right, and uh, it's something that is being talked about among our friends, and we want to impart to them, okay, there's nothing wrong about that, but there's a right time for that. All right? And we're discipling, imparting to them, letting them know to be guided by the truth of the Word of God, to seek the Lord. All right? And so as parents, I hope you know that you have a role in discipling your kids according to the ways of the Lord. Now, if you're not a parent, how can you be involved? You know, we have these bookmarks. We will hand them out to you. Can we go ahead and pass them out? And here are three ways on how we can be involved. We can pray. There is power in prayer. Amen. We can pray. If you, you know, all the campuses that, you know, Nikki mentioned in her preaching and, you know, all the campuses where we have students in, it wasn't possible without prayer. I remember they would have prayer walks. Uh, during our prayer and fasting, even though they would set aside time, hindi pa sila nandun sa campus na yun, they would go to the campus, they would walk around, they would pray, they would gather students, even students who are not from that campus, pupunta sila doon, mag-walk sila, mag-pray sila, they would lay hands, they would declare, they would proclaim, this is God's inheritance, and we can continue to pray for salvation of the students in the campuses, especially here in San Juan. We can also give. Okay. Our campus missionaries, I hope you understand that the reason why we're able to raise up a campus missionaries, I think Nikki mentioned, see, Victoria is one of our interns who, will, uh, who is working towards becoming a campus missionary herself. You know, we, our campus missionaries raise their own support so that we can continue to raise up campus missionary after campus missionary after campus missionary because, you know, 
the campuses are a lot, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen. And we can do our part by giving, by by being involved and supporting our campus missionaries to go. We may not be, you know, baka yung iba sa atin, if we enter the gate, parang sino ha, di ba? Bawal ka dito, di ba? But our campus missionaries, they still look young, most of them. Okay? Now, they're still very young. You know, they, they, they can disguise themselves as students, okay? And, and really enter into the campuses. And so let's continue to support them in that. Third is to go. You can actually also volunteer, help out. Okay? Every Sunday, 2 p.m., although not, for this campus Sunday because all our young people are here. We have our youth Sundays. Uh, you can help out, you can volunteer, our, helping our disciple, our 10 to 13 years old. Uh, also, we have other events. You can approach some of our campus missionaries on how you can be involved. If you want to take part, if you want to uh, help them you know, in whatever events that they may have for our campuses, our, our students, you can do take part in that as well so please do take this home with you pray about it see and how you can be involved and take part in what god is doing in the next generation amen can we just lift up our hands today as we close the service in prayer and in blessing lord we thank you father god for what you're doing lord god uh in, in every generation lord god lord we know that you have been faithful lord god from the beginning until even today and will continue to be faithful to generations after generations after us and lord i pray that lahat po tayo, lord god we would seek you lord god and, and seek what you're doing especially amongst our young people lord god lord we know that there are so many negative connotations lord god surrounding young people today lord god but even today as we look across this room seeing all of these young people here today lord we know that there is hope hope for our next generation hope for our nation lord god not because of who they are but simply because of who you are you are our hope you are their hope lord god and we continue to declare that lord today and may we be involved in declaring the hope that is found in christ to the generations even after us lord even for the parents here parents just continue to raise your hands lord i just pray father god for the grace of god the wisdom to be upon every parent here today lord god the privilege lord god of discipling their kids in the ways of the lord in the truth of the word of god lord i just pray father god, even just for the patience the joy even lord god and how lord may, we may not have all the answers lord god but you have all the answers and so we run to you we seek you on how we can raise up our children to be men and women of god who will pursue the things of god so lord we thank you lord god that we have a church here who is for the next generation lord god lord even today as we leave this place may we go lord god with a renewed mindset a renewed vision a, uh, with a purpose Lord God of seeing the next generation differently through your eyes seeing that there is hope Lord God and seeing as they are like sheep without a shepherd Lord God that, that we would have eyes on compassion and see how we can bridge them connect them to the source of love through the source of hope which is you Jesus Christ so even today I pray that may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every person here today as we leave this room with your, the mission that you have imparted to us Lord God may we move in faith and be a blessing to others in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you next week. If you need well, hi guys, welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our Victory groups. If you're interested, Please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.